Hi, ladies. How are you all doing? So I put together a little PowerPoint presentation to go more in depth about budgeting and like how do you start a budget and what's in a budget. So I'm just going to do like a short video and just go through uh, the PowerPoint that I created and talk a little bit about each slide and then that's it for this video, okay? So the first slide is what's in your budget, budgeting one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, the next slide is what is a budget? A budget is the process of creating a plan to spend your money. This spending plan is called a budget. Creating this spending plan allows you to determine in advance whether you will have enough money to do the things you need or want or would like to do. Budgeting is simply balancing your expenses with your income. Because basically your budget gives you the leeway to let your money go where you want it to go instead of your money going, instead of you not knowing where your money is going, a budget is basically you telling your money where to go instead of your money doing whatever. And then you look up and you're like, oh my God, I don't have any money. You don't even know where your money went. That's basically what a budget is giving, is, is, is doing for you. And is using your income to basically tell each dollar, like soldiers, to tell each dollar where to go. So you're the captain, you're in charge, and you're in charge of the soldiers, which are the dollars, and you tell the dollars where to go. You don't let your money control you, you control your money. Okay, how to create a budget. Write down your total income for the month. This is your total take home after tax. Pay for both you and your married spouse, your boyfriend, your partner, whatever. Don't forget to include everything. Full-time jobs, second jobs, freelance pay, social security checks, and any other ongoing sources of income. So basically, everything is a part of your income. I don't care if you sell stuff on eBay. I don't care if you do lashes once a week. I don't care if you do nails whenever. Everything should be considered as a part of your income. Shit, the stimulus check, everything is considered a part of your income. Like if it's coming into your house and it's money, it's considered a part of your income. So you have to use your income to do what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, list all your expenses. Think about your regular bills, mortgage, electricity, and your irregular bills, quarterly payments that are due for the upcoming month. After that, total your other costs like food, gas, and entertainment. Each dollar you spend should be accounted for. Expenses also include savings and investing. So basically, all of your money should have a place to go. Even if you, whatever you do with your money, you get your hair done, you should have a place in your budget for hair. You get your nails done, you should have a place in your budget for nails. Like anything, whatever you buy, you should have a place in your budget for that thing. So you can know where your money went. You, so you don't just look up and your money gone and you don't know why. So this picture over here is just some examples of what's inside of a budget, like your savings can be a part of the budget. Because basically, if you, even if you want to save your money, you want to allot a certain amount of money each month in your budget to save. Okay, say if I said I'm going to save $20 this month, I'm going to put that in my budget. And I'm going to say, okay, $20 for savings, $20 for investing, $20 for this, $20 for that. So you know where your money is going. Of course, your utilities, all your household bills, your housing, if you... If you pay rent, mortgage, whatever, uh, those are essential bills. Your debt, if you have any type of debt, you want to make sure you put that in your budget so you can start paying off your debt. Transportation, everything, gas. Um, if you have to, anything dealing with your car, you put that also in the budget. Health, insurance, all that good stuff, food, everything, groceries. I don't care if you go to the store and you just buy a bottle of water, like that should go on your budget. Personal, like to your household items, you know, your personal hygiene items, all that should go on your budget. Entertainment, we don't need to be doing a lot of entertainment if we ain't really got no money like that. But okay, we could put entertainment in a budget too. Child care, if you have a uh, babysitter, daycare, after school programs, that should go on a budget also. And education, if you pay for like your school, your children's schooling or anything like that, that should also go in the budget. Everything, everything in your life should be in a budget. So you know where your money is going, okay? Next slide. This is how you create the budget. After you do those, after you do that second step, after you write down all your expenses and everything, 
and then you subtract your expenses from your income. So everything should equal zero. This is called a zero-based budget, meaning your income minus your expenses should equal zero. If you're over or under, check your math or simply return to the previous step and try again. So basically, you got your income. You know how much your income is. You wrote down all your expenses. So you subtract your expenses from your income. And then you see how much you have left over or you see if you have nothing left over or you see if you have more left over. Track your expenses throughout the month. Once you start the budget, you'll need to stay on top of tracking your expenses. So basically, let's go to the next slide. Okay, if you have an unbalanced budget, meaning if your budget is in the negative, not enough money to cover expenses, you have two options. You increase your monthly expenses or you decrease your expenses by cutting things that are not essential. So basically, sis, if you got... You know, if your budget in the negative because you're spending more money than you're bringing in, that's not good because no one should be spending more money than they're bringing in because then you're going to start having, you're going to start having to borrow money, you know, do all type of things just to keep up with your expenses. And that's not how it's supposed to go because your income is supposed to be enough to cover your expenses. And if it's not, you need to cut out certain things that you don't need because it's not benefiting you. So over here, I have an example some of the biggest money wasters, jewelry, designer clothes that you can't afford, gadgets you can't afford, gambling, eating out. This is a big one for people. People eat out a lot and waste so much money on eating out. Expensive cars, some high-ass car notes, um, bank fees, and addiction. So basically, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have nice things. What I'm saying is it, you should have nice things when you can afford it. Like you shouldn't be out buying things that you can't afford just because you can buy it. Because just because you can buy it, does, it doesn't mean that you can afford it. So I'm on a strict budget. Me and my husband, like, I don't go, I don't, I barely go anywhere. I don't buy anything. I don't, I stick strictly to the budget because I'm thinking of the future. Like all that gadgets and all this stuff that can wait because I know my children's future is more important. All those designer bags, designer, I don't, I don't really need all that. That can wait. My children's future is more important. I'm going to take my income and I'm going to use it to invest towards the future. Because when I get 50, 60 years old, I'm not going to be able to work anymore. And I don't want to work. I want to have enough assets built up in investments where I don't have to work. And I'm not wasting my money on this stuff right now because this stuff is a waste of money. Like, it's just a waste. You don't need it. You can, you can live without it. It's a desire. We need to start... We really need to start like limiting our desires and focusing on our needs and our children's needs for the future and generational wealth and stuff like that. Cause these desires, they they're not gonna, they're not gonna fulfill what you need. It's just not what your children need. Okay. If you have money left in your budget, you have a couple of options. Roll over extra cash to next month's budget. Find a useful place for the cash in that month's budget. Like if you have money left over and you made your budget. And then you, you realize, okay, I can put a little bit more in savings for my leftover money, then that's what you can do. Or you can throw extra cash at your debt. Like if you have a lot of debt, that's another thing. Like you should, you should be like trying to focus on paying your debt off and getting out of debt because it's not good to be in debt. So if you have extra money, you can throw it at your debt also. Okay, now let's talk about emotional spending. Okay, this is, I feel like us as women, like this is very important. What is emotional spending? Emotional spending occurs when you buy something you don't need and in some cases don't even really want. As a result of feeling stressed out, bored, underappreciated, incompetent, unhappy, or any number of other emotions. In fact, we even spend emotionally when we're happy. So basically like I'm, I'm a woman. So I know as a woman, like if I'm not having a good day or if I'm not feeling good, I just go out and buy stuff. I go buy jewelry. I go buy clothes, even a shirt. I go buy anything just to fulfill whatever. I don't know. I'm fulfilling some type of whatever. But that's not good because you end up wasting your money like that. You know, that money can be go towards, that money can go in your savings or that money can go towards your investing or that money can go towards paying off your debt. Even if it's $5, $5 add up, a dollar add up, a penny add up. So Everything adds up. Like we got to stop thinking, oh, it's just five dollars. Oh, it's just twenty dollars. But that that adds up. That twenty dollars it adds up. So number two, 
Can you recognize needs from wants? I feel like this is another big thing, like in our community, in our community, like we don't know needs from wants. We really feel like what we want, we need. And that's not, that's not good because wants, you can live without wants. Those are basically desires. And I'm not saying that, you know, I never want things or you shouldn't want things, but it's just when you're in a certain position, a certain situation financially, when you're not financially healthy, you shouldn't even be focusing on wants. You should only be focusing on needs so you can get your needs together. You can get your finances together so you can be able to afford your wants. That's the thing. Like that's where, that's where our community get it twisted. Like, oh, like I can buy this nice bag or I can buy this nice car, but you can't really, you can't really afford it. And it's not really going to benefit you in the future or your children's future. You're going to have a high ass car note. or You're going to have a bag sitting in the closet that you could have put that money towards something else and it could have benefit you and your children. So in economics, a need is something needed to survive while a want is something that people desire to have. That may or may not be able to obtain. The terms needs and wants are used in today's economy and not always accurately. This is true because like I used to do it too. Like people always say, oh, I need this. I need that. Like I need those Jordans or I need those. No, you don't. You want them. You don't need them. But you're not even financially healthy to even buy those things. Look at people who have money. They don't go out just buying expensive stuff. But if they can, if they wanted to, they can because they have their shit together. They have their children's um, savings funds together. They have their children's investment funds. They have investment funds. They own property. They own real estate. Like if you don't, if you don't have those type of assets which is some assets are things that put money in your pockets and liabilities are things that take money out like shoes, clothes, like that's not going to bring you no money unless you're selling it. And you shouldn't be worried about that stuff until you can be able to, you can be financially healthy until you have money for your children, until you're building generational wealth. Other than that, no, you shouldn't be focused on that. Number three, don't let your desire for wants rob you of financial stability of the future. Basically, like, okay, we're young, right? We can work as much as we want. Like, I work long hours, double shifts, blah, blah, blah. We're doing that now so we can accumulate enough money to invest or whatever we have to do to compound our money to get more money. But when you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you're not going to be able to work as much as you can now. So basically, you need to take advantage of your youth. And, and take advantage of being able to monopolize on like working like and this is 2021 it's so many different ways to make money so take advantage of that because when we get older nobody's like nobody's gonna want to work like when I go to Walmart and I go to McDonald's and stuff and I see people that's 50 60 years old walking and working at Walmart and stuff like I'm not shaming anybody but it's just I tell myself all the time like I'm not gonna be like that because it's kind of sad. Like we need to work on ourselves now so we don't be in that situation. And we also don't be in a situation where our children, we are a burden on our children. We t- our children got to take care of us and we don't have no finances to help them. That's another thing. Okay, next, the next slide. Stop wasting your future wealth. Six signs you're an emotional spender. You make big purchases that you end up returning. You shop when you're sad or angry. We all do it. I used to do it too. You get a, excuse me, you get a sense of fulfillment after making a purchase. Yeah. You regularly exceed your budget on spontaneous purchases. You hide your purchases because you feel shame or guilt. You stop to make others, you shop to make others like you. Don't try to fill an emotional gap in your life with spending. No object will ever satisfy your soul. That's true. Like if you feel like you constantly have to like go out and buy things to make yourself feel better, it's something else, sis. Like it's something else that's going on with you because you spending all this money, all these bags, trying to keep up with the Joneses, all these, it's, it's not helping your generational wealth. It's not helping your children. Even if you don't have children, it's not helping your retirement, sweetie. Because when you get 60, 70 years old, you what is that bag going to do something for you unless you sell it and i'm pretty sure it's not going to be worth what you bought it for unless it's a antique or whatever so basically we need to stop wasting our income that we're making now on things that don't matter 
and we're wasting our future. We're just wasting it. Income taxes, stimulus checks, um, your, your, your income, everything. Stop wasting it. Just stop. Because if we save our money and we do what we're supposed to do with our money, like we would be in a better position. I would be in a better position. You, everybody would be in a better position. But we need to get smarter about our money, y'all. Like we got to get smart. Like, and then it's not even all about money because money come and go, but it's time. Time is more important than money because that's something you can't get back. Like the age you are now, next year, you're going to be an older age. The year after that, you're going to be an older age. Don't say I should have, would have, could have. Start now. Start investing in your future now. Okay, next slide. Ways to combat emotional spending. How to break the emotional spending cycle. Okay, you feel the urge to shop or browse. We all do. Ask yourself, am I trying to fill a void? Don't start shopping. Discover ways to distract yourself, right? You begin browsing or scrolling. Ask yourself, am I enjoying this? Am I finding what I'm looking for? Am I sure this isn't overwhelming me? Stop shopping. I mean, it's plenty of times I went in a store and I was like, oh, this is cute. It's nice. Before I had the mindset I had now, before I started budgeting and paying off debt and stuff, I would just go in a store and just buy stuff, like especially the clearance rack. I love the clearance rack. I'd just be on there just, Yes, I, I want this out. I still have clothes in my closet that I haven't wore. They have tags on them. It's a waste. You go to the checkout. Ask yourself, do I really want, need this? Does it have value for me? Can I afford it? Will I still want, will I still want slash use it in a year? Empty basket and don't check out. Right, like if you got a whole bunch of stuff, happen to me plenty of times. If you got a whole bunch of stuff in your basket, that's like a no, like you really don't need it. So you know, you got that same color shoe at home. You got that same shirt at home. Just put it back, sis. Take that money and do something more constructive with it. Put it in your savings account, like put it in your investment fund, like whatever you got to do. You've completed the purchase. Ask yourself, do I regret this or feel guilty? And are these feelings of guilt or buyer's remorse legitimate? Return, return or cancel the item? Period. Next. Okay. Why financial literacy and budgeting should be important to women. We are the first teachers to our children and to the world. Women, think about it. We have children. Like the first person our children learn from is us. Even if the father's in a household, the first person that the children cling to is the mother. The first person that the first person that the child has any type of contact with is the mother outside and inside. Like when you have your baby, they put it right on your chest, your baby's in your stomach. So you you're able to, it depends on what you have in your mind, what you pass on to your children. And you don't want to pass on spending, bad spending habits, you know, uh, not being prepared, procrastinate. You don't want to pass it on to your children. A lot of times we are heads of the household, heads of our household, like single mothers, like if you're a single mother, most of the time you're head of your household, like you're in charge, you're in charge of your household. So you make the decisions like it's up to you. Okay, number three, as parents, we are responsible for creating a foundation for our children's financial future and building generational wealth. Period. Like, do you want your child? Do you want your children to grow up? Not knowing what you don't know? No. So you want to gain as much knowledge, you want to get in a, a better position. So your children don't have to ask somebody, oh, can I, you know, can I have a day off of work so I can go to my family? Re can I get up? No, you don't want, I, me personally, I have two boys, a six-year-old and a three-year-old. I don't want my children working for anybody unless it's me or family company or family friend, because I don't want my children to be subjected to feeling like somebody's control of their life. I have a job. We all have a job. We know how that feels. You're, it, you basically feel like your job is in control of your life. And I don't want my children to feel like that. Or I don't want my children to feel like, you know, they can't afford some things or they can't do this, they can't do that. I want my children to have nice things. I want them to go on vacation. I want them to have music lessons. I want them to, uh, whatever they want to do, like uh, play the piano, whatever. I want them to be able to do those things without questioning can my parents afford it? Or like we struggling or like, I don't, I don't want my children to be like that. So, and I put this little meme over here, darling, you're a goddess, a badass, and you totally got this. Basically like 
don't doubt yourself. Don't think just because, oh, I'm a single mother or I don't have a spouse or don't think that it can't be done because it's single mamas out here getting it every day. Like if you waste the money at the club or you waste the money anywhere else, you, you can do, you can also do this. If you, if you have any habits, buy liquor, buy weed, buy sick, whatever. I'm not trying to judge nobody, but those habits cost money and they're very expensive. So if you, if you can put money towards those habits, you can put money towards your future and towards your children. That's, that's just how I feel. Okay. Why, why your why is what sets you apart from everyone else. It's your purpose. It's what inspires you to take action. Your why is also what inspires others to take action, spread your ideas. It's the reason why you want to be successful. Okay. So basically your why is uh, the reason why you do everything. Like me, my why is the reason why I do everything is my children because I want to be financially free. I want to be financially independent. I want to be spontaneous with my life. If I wake up one day and I say, okay, I want to go to Africa. I can do that. I don't have to call my job and say, oh, can I have three days off? No, I can do whatever I want to do. If I decide I want to anything, I just, if I just, if my children decide they want to, you know, uh, Maybe my son want to try out playing a guitar or maybe my son want to go over here and take a trip. Like I can do that. I don't have to do nobody's controlling my life. This is why like I'm so focused on financial education and financial freedom because I don't want nobody feeling like they have control over me financially, basically with the paycheck. What is your why? So now you got to figure out like why you do what you do. Like why, why do you want to be better? Like basically your purpose in order to experience meaning and joy in the things you do daily, it is important for you to have a true reason or purpose behind your decision and actions. It could also be called your why. Ask yourself, why am I doing what I'm doing? What is the purpose of my actions? How do my decisions or actions relate to my happiness? When you find the right purpose, fulfillment can manifest. Basically, if you're really passionate about your why, you're going to do it. Like I'm passionate about my children. I'm passionate about being free. I'm passionate about doing what I want to my hair, but I don't have to think about it. Cause they're going to look at me at work. Like, Oh my God, you can't wear your hair like this. or You can't dress like that. Or you can't, that's another, that's one, another one of my wives. Like the way I dress, the way I am is very different. And everybody can't accept that. And when, I can't wear my hair a certain way when I go to work. Like I can't, and I don't like that. I just want to be myself. I don't want anybody having control over me as far as my creativity or anything. And I, and most people are, are at work more than anything. So like, no, I, that's my why. I just want to be myself. I want to be spontaneous. I want to do what I want to do. Like, and that's it. So you have to figure out, is your why strong enough for you to actually do what you need to be doing? Because our community, I'm talking about like the African-American community, we're, we're basically at the bottom of financial wealth like the wealth gap between caucasians and african americans everybody is so huge like we're it's so far apart it's horrible like the first thing we need to do is start and a budget is basically the bare minimum like that's the that's our first step because you have to get your household in order you have to get your finances in order if you're not on a budget you would not be successful because you don't know where your money is going you need to basically let your money know where to go. And then after you do that and you realize that you might have money left over or you might feel like you got a raise, you got a relief because now you don't have to keep wondering at the end of every month or at the end of your paycheck, damn, I don't know where my money went. I used to say the same thing. I used to be like, damn, I just got paid and I don't got nothing because you don't even know where your money went. You don't went over here and bought that. You don't went over here. And it's not even about just buying stuff. It's about being in order. Like a budget is like, basically you're in order. Okay. Next is your choice. What's next for you? Number one, I really encourage everyone to create a budget. Like it's so many budgeting apps. You can do it by hand or you can get an app. The app that we use is called Every Dollar. And you basically go in and you put in like your paycheck. Then you put in, you fill in each category like hair, um, hygiene you fill in everything household transportation and you got to make sure you like another thing you got to be true to yourself like you really have to be true to yourself and really write down what's true because if 
If you lie to yourself like, oh, I don't need to write that in the budget. Yes, you do. You need to write everything. Groceries. Um, if you think you're going to spend this amount of money on groceries. And if you and if you know you need to cut down because you spend it too much, cut down, sis. Cut down on whatever you know you spend it too much money on. If you got to, if it's 2021, nobody should be paying 200 and something dollars for cable. That's horrible. Internet, like, you need to cut that bill down. Like, when me and my husband got on our financial journey, like, we don't have no cable. Like, it's so much stuff that we cut down on because we're that focused on creating a future and, and creating a, a space where we don't have to get up and go to work. We don't have to, I don't have to get up and go to work. So I'm sacrificing. It's all about sacrifice. I'm sacrificing now. So my children don't have to struggle. So, you know, when I get older, I don't have to be working at 60 years old. I'm chilling. Like I got assets. I got properties. I got investments. I'm chilling. That's basically what I'm trying to do. Number two, write down your why and remind yourself of this every day. So basically like write down your why, like get a notebook, write down why, why you're doing what you're doing. Like, if you need to be reminded, look at it every day, write it down every day. I'm doing this for my children. So my children don't got to struggle, you know? So, you know, we started from zero. Well, I know I did. I don't want my kids to start from zero. I want my kids to start from 10 and build on up, which, because with each generation, like the generation is supposed to get better. Every generation is supposed to get better. And if the next generation ain't better, like something wrong. Like if your children aren't doing better than you were doing at that age, something, you did something wrong. So we got to fix that. Number three, knowledge is power. Read, listen to audiobooks and financial literacy podcasts. Okay. So this is a big one for me because like I always was a big reader, but to be honest, I never really read financial literacy stuff. I always read like African-American books and books on history. I still do, but now like I really read a lot of finance books. And once you start reading these financial books, like it definitely changed your mindset on the world because it's a whole nother finance world that if you're not a part of, you don't know nothing about. Like people making money, people getting it, like people doing their thing. It's just that if you're a spender, you're a consumer, you don't know nothing about these people over here, basically. So I listen to a lot of audio books. I listen to books. It's books on YouTube. I can give y'all, I'm going to give y'all some recommendations in a group. It's books on YouTube that you can listen to for free. Even if you have some of these subscription services, you can listen to podcasts, Pandora has podcasts, Sirius X and all these, uh, what's the other one? I don't know the other one, but everybody has podcasts. I like just find a pot of something you interested in and just listen to it you don't even have to understand everything at first just listen and just try to get familiar with the terminology don't let that scare you like when people like these finance terms and investing terms don't let that scare you just look up the definition on google sis just try to figure it out because if you run away now like you're going to basically going to be lost you're going to be lost forever just try to figure it out like me i didn't know i i didn't know all this stuff like when i first started learning I just listened to books. I listened to a whole bunch of books. I read a whole bunch of books. Like now I'm reading a book about Jeff Bezos and how he got started in a lot of his company. It's a very interesting book. So it's about just learning and growing. Even YouTube. So it's like what you watching when you get on YouTube? Hair, nail. That's cool. But you also need to put in, you also need to listen to some financial literacy stuff, some podcasts on how people got started and because people really came from the bottom. Like people came from the bottom and they worked their way to the top. You can, we can do the same thing within our own household. Like we have to be the CEO of our last name, chief executive officer of our last name. Because if you don't do it for your family, who's going to do it for you? Nobody. You think somebody care about your kids the way you care about your kids? You think somebody care about you the way that you're going to care about yourself? No. So it's time to get up, stand up, take control of our finances, take control of our money, like it's time. And over here I have certain type of best ways to gain knowledge. We have books, of course, mentors, you know, reach out to people who are doing the things that you like to do, that you want to do, and just ask questions. YouTube University, you can find anything on YouTube. If you don't understand something, if you want to, if you want to learn about stocks and you don't understand stocks, get on YouTube. Like that's how I learned. That's how I know how to, how to trade stocks and options and all that stuff. YouTube, podcasts, I always, I'm always listening to podcasts. Like 
it's so inspiring to hear people's story, how they got started and stuff like that. Like it's inspiring. Online courses are good too, because even though YouTube is free, like it's going to become, it's going to come a point in time where you're going to have to like pay to learn. So online courses are great. And seminars was COVID now, but I wish it wasn't COVID. I would definitely attend more seminars. So, and that is the end of my presentation. You can do it. Don't doubt yourself. That's another thing we struggle with, especially as women. A lot of self-doubt, um, a lot of victimization. Um, but we got to get over that. It's 2021, y'all. We got to do this thing, like... And I don't want to leave nobody behind. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to eat. I want everybody to have their finances in order. Like, I want everybody's children to be financially healthy. And I want everybody to be chilling. Like, I want everybody to, to do good. Like, that's why I'm doing this. Like, I could be doing something else, but I'm, I'm doing this. Because I think it's very beneficial. And I also think it's a difference between how women and men learn when it comes to finan financial because I am in a group with my husband and we do like Zoom calls. Let me know if anybody wants to join. But it's, I realize it's really not a lot of women in there. It's mostly men. And I and me, I feel like a lot of women get intimidated when it comes to like talking about finances and stuff because there's a lot of terminology and stuff that people might not know. But I'm here to tell you, ain't no reason to get intimidated, sis. We just got to learn. That's it. That's what I did. You just got to learn. Like, Every day I dedicate myself to learning something like either I watch a podcast, I'm reading my book, I'm reading two books actually, watch a podcast, um, and even your social media, like all of us is on social media a lot. We need to clean our social media up, so it's like we don't need to be following nothing that don't serve us. Like I've been doing that, I've been doing it for a couple months now because I have a lot of, I follow a lot of people on Instagram and stuff like that, but if I run across something and I'm like, yeah, this don't serve me. Like, I'm, I'm basically looking for pages that help me with finances or, you know, ideas on houses or um, investment ideas. It's, it's so many people out there who putting so much content on the internet. You can learn so much. But if you follow the wrong people, you're not, you're not ever going to see that type of content. You're always going to see like, the challenges and the TikToks and the whatever, whatever. But we we older, like I'm in my 30s. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all in your 30s, like it's time to get on the grind because time is not waiting for anybody. Time not waiting for nobody. It's not waiting for our children. It's not waiting for us. With COVID and everything, the way things going, we need to find a way to like make money, invest so we don't have to work. We just need to make it happen. So a little progress each day adds up to big results. And this is true too. Like just do little things every day. Like do little tiny things towards your goal every day. Then you, you, you eventually you're going to reach it. That's basically how life works. Like nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens overnight. It's always little baby steps towards your goal for you to reach your goal. Okay. So that's it for me. I am going to do another video probably next week on the budgeting app, Every Dollar, the one that we use, and show you ladies like more in depth, like um, how to use the app and like what to, what to put in, how do you track this and how do you track that. But in the meantime, ladies, grab a notebook, you know, start writing down some of your expenses, start writing down some things that you feel like you can cut from your expenses that's not that important, you know? desire, instant gratification. We need to go ahead and, and let that rest for now so we can get our finances together so we can have everything we want in the future. Live like no one else will so you can live like no one else will. Like now, live like no one else will. Like, shit, don't go nowhere. You know, save your money. Don't splurge your money like you used to. Oh, you can go without that outfit. You can go without this. You can go without that. Live like that now so you can build up your future, you know, build up your wealth. So later on, you can buy whatever you want to buy. That's basically should be the thinking. It's not the other way around. It's not buy things when you can't afford it. It's buy things when you can't afford it. So I'm going to start running my mouth, y'all. That's it for me. And thank you guys for watching. And I'm going to do, let me, let me know if you guys want more videos like this, okay? All right, ladies. Have a good day, everybody.